this is 545 Live. We're broadcasting from downtown Brattleboro tonight. We'll get a, uh, a look at uh, all the happenings in town. Heck, why am I talking to this about you when I could let the awesome graphics speak for themselves? There we go. Uh, just Maria Dominguez, content specialist, just come from court where the ladies of the Shut It Down Affinity Group have just been sentenced. They are, in fact, guilty. Uh, a murder for hire case in Brattleboro. A little un, uh, unexpected, really, in the state of Vermont. And that cell phone tower in Newfane has got uh, residents all, uh, all up in a bunch. Could lead to some alternative uh, placement. All that and more. We do it in 15 minutes. So if you've got the time and the attention span, I uh, would urge you to stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this September, uh, September, November 27th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. Welcome back. Hope you all had a good uh, Thanksgiving. Be taking you through the next few minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news with a jam-packed show from uh, downtown Brattleboro. You can see uh, out the window behind me, we've got to turn it up. Looking across from uh, Borough Specialized Sports here in uh, downtown Brattleboro. All right, let's keep the stories coming, and we'll start by talking about the ladies of the Shut It Down Vermont Yankee Affinity Group. Uh, now, this is footage just rupt, rushed up the hill from 545 Live content specialist Maria Dominguez. So we'll head on over to the close-up here and take a look. Uh, the Here we go. The Shut It Down Affinity Group, a collection of anti-Vermont Yankee activists ages 63 to 92, saw five of its senior members stand trial before a jury today for their role in a demonstration that included padlocking, uh, shut the gates to Vermont Yankees administrative headquarters on Old Ferry Road in Brattleboro. Uh, they were sentenced to, uh, found guilty each by the jury and sentenced to $350, which they have now declined to pay, and a suspended sentence because of some of the community service they've been doing. Let's take a look at that footage, uh, a breathless Maria Dominguez. Content specialist, 545 Live content specialist, superstar Maria Dominguez, delivered just moments ago. Hey, what are you doing? Boogie, tell me what happened. Guilty again, Francis. Thank you. We have to go to the office. We have to go to the office. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. We'll catch, we gotta go to the clerk's office first. Okay. Pardon? Tell me what happened. Um, we were found guilty, and since our standard is that we are already doing community service, we refuse to pay, to do more community service or to pay a fine. So now we're trying to find out what's happening after that. And with the jail was the thing. That's the latest footage from uh, the courthouse across the street where Maria Dominguez, kind of specialist, has just run back uh, ladies of the Shut It Down Vermont Yankee Affinity Group, uh, shut, it, or shut It Down Affinity Group, an anti-Vermont Yankee protest advocacy group. Members were arrested for a protest uh, that happened last year uh, just after Hurricane Irene. All right, and with that, uh, we'll launch into our... Uh, latest feature, our Vermont State Police Report, or uh, VSP report here, courtesy of our contact up north, Stephanie Desario. Okay, Vermont State Police are assisting New Mexico authorities in a murder-for-hire investigation. How often do you get a murder-for-hire investigation around here? Uh, that's in St. Albans, Vermont, and uh, kicked off late yesterday when the New Mexico police requested assistance from the Vermont State Police in their continuing investigation of Mark Stake, age 41, and Tanner Round, age 23. Both su subjects are being investigated for their part in a criminal conspiracy to locate and murder two individuals in Vermont. Stake was arrested by the Vermont State Police as a fugitive from justice on November 19th on a war warren warrant for a violation of felony probation. Um, and Roan was arrested by uh, the New York State Police as a fugitive from justice on November 20th on a warrant and two counts of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. Uh, they've got a, a picture here of Roan. Uh, of course, he's now been apprehended, but uh, that is his mugshot there, if we take a look up in the corner. 
they've determined that the intended targets do not reside in the St. Albans area, however, and uh, the earlier reports that stated the intended targets were from Vermont uh, have proven to be unfounded. So, arrests made, but uh, the message there uh, is that uh, no one is in danger in Vermont. All right, that's... Uh, the last of our Vermont State Police report for today, but we'll be sure to check in with more information from around the state. And uh, with that, we'll go back in and talk about uh, New Fane, where the debate continues uh, over the, uh, the bridge. Which bridge are we talking about? Well, uh, there was a lot of talk in New Fane about the Hunter Brook Bridge, but that wasn't enough controversy for folks. So once that was settled, they decided to launch into talks uh, over a cell phone tower uh, in Rattleboro. So, uh, let's get the script on that here. Uh, the debate continues over a proposed cell phone tower, which we reported last week would be located on land released from uh, William and Florence Stats and built by AT&T. That would provide coverage in Newfane, which is, uh, ho they hope to get 55% of the area covered. Um, however, the uh, Newfane Select Board so far has really proved the battleground as local residents have sparred this month over the necessity of the tower, something some uh, say it could be an eyesore, even a safety hazard, and others consider a necessity for an area that's lost most of its landline communication during Hurricane Irene. Um, now it turns out AT&T may be considering alternative sites after a representative confirmed with Senator Peter Galbraith that there were other locations on the table. Galbraith told the reformer today that, quote, uh, they agree to consider alternative sites and will write the select board saying so. Uh, however, Galbraith did uh, urge residents to be cautious as there are limited uh, alternatives for the site. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep an, our eye on uh, some of the, the happenings there. Uh, in the meantime, we've got uh, a, a calm, we've summed up the footage from uh, all this month's heated debate at the Newfane Select Board. Uh, this is a little series of clips put together by 545 Live content specialist Greg McAllister. Let's take a look. It's very important for us, if the town is willing and if the Regional Planning Commission is willing, to provide a letter of recommendation, whether that be a... So that's what you're asking. That's really what we're asking you for today. So where the word uh, Newfane is, I'm just showing it with my laser pointer, oh, you'll okay. see that that's basically the village. The site, which is on the Stats property off of Oak Hill Road, okay. that's, that's where our site will be. The tower itself, uh, you can see here in this profile, is 130 feet tall. That we do, in fact, have a park, which is the New Payne Town Forest, and it does, in fact, have a scenic vista, which is a lookout. Unfortunately, whether this impairs the view or not was never tested, and we can't tell right now 100% for sure whether it does or it doesn't. Um, we would like to have a balloon test of that. It's a safety issue for our town. Okay. It's a big safety issue. You know, I have a 14-year-old son, and he said to me, how tall is this going to be? And I said, 130 feet. And he said, that's 13 stories. There's nothing in this area. In fact, in this whole area that I can think of, that is near that tall. What are the buildings in Brattleboro? Five stories? Readings that I've made is that cell towers within a few years even are going to become obsolete because digital technology is replacing it. Uh, my, my question, based on that assumption, is who's really making money from this and why are we choosing this technology as opposed to looking at other technologies that aren't as intrusive? You can catch uh, all that information on BCTV Channel 10, where New Fan Select Board meetings go up uh, every week. Uh, they meet twice a week, but uh, we show them uh, all week long. You can find a complete schedule at BrattleboroTV.org, where you can also watch those meetings on demand. Um, which uh, means you can skim ahead, skim back and forth a little bit if you don't want to watch the entire meeting. Though why wouldn't you really? All right, enough chit-chat. Moving on. Turning Point, an area resource center for residents recovering from drug and alcohol addiction, has invited its members to join them for a brown bag lunch. Um, that's coming up this week to discuss the fundraising uh, efforts that many hope will lead the center to the center's relocation back to downtown Brattleboro. Turning Point moved from downtown uh, out Putney Road last fall in search of considerably lower overhead, but with almost 6,000 less residents attending support meetings and other activities uh, in the new space over the past year, Turning Point Executive Director Susie Walker says a downtown presence is critical to making their services accessible. We have found that since we moved, even though our programming has grown, is stronger, we have more to offer. Um, we have more collaborations with community partners. There's more going on. Um, there aren't as many people getting up there to take advantage of it. 
That's uh, Turning Point Executive Director Susie Walker when she spoke with Daryl Pillsbury here in our downtown studios. Her complete interview about that project and the center in general can be found, again, brettlebrewtv.org. All right, a few things to note before we wrap up here. We'll take a look at uh, the weather courtesy of BUHS-TV, Brattlebrew Union High School's morning news advisory program. Let's see what they've got in store for us. Well, for the next two days, in my opinion, the weather is going to be very bad because I hate snow. Today, there will be a high of 37, a low of 23. There will be a 40% chance of snow. And tomorrow, high of 39, a low of 21. Um, there will be some snow showers, in the, mostly in the afternoon, with another 30% chance of snow. Back to the desk. The UHS TV shows weekday mornings at 10.15 a.m. on Channel 10 following the rebroadcast of this year, 545 Live. That's every weekday, excluding Wednesday when they take a well-deserved day off. You can also find it on Video On Demand with all our local programming and catch a rebroadcast uh, at 6 p.m. on Channel 8 right after this broadcast. What a, a serendipitous uh, scheduling. All right, that's the full lid, everybody. So uh, I'll... Finish with the chit-chat, the dilly-dallying here, and uh, head on out to enjoy the rest of this week. But remember, we'll be back Friday with an all-new broadcast. Uh, we'll get all the latest, and we'll get a, a complete report on the hearing held earlier today at the courthouse across the street with the ladies of the Shut It Down Vermont Yankee Affinity Group. All right, thanks to kind and specialist Maria Dominguez, who booked that uh, footage from across the street back here so we could show it. Uh, our kind and specialist and editor, Greg McAllister, for putting together clips of the Newfane Select Board meeting controversy on that cell phone tower. BCTV's latest hire, Rich Melanson, who tapes all those meetings, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the way it does. You've been uh, fantastic, all of you, and to you viewers who make the show worth producing. Night, everybody. We have another 30% chance of snow. Back to the desk. I love snow. Just saying. Hate strong word. Well, anyway, for students taking the ACT test, if...